All right, everybody, it is three o'clock. Thank you very much for signing in to our Experiential Learning in Arts live Q&A and webinar. Um, so we are going to go through a number of questions that we've received in advance when you all registered. Um, however, please do feel free to ask your questions in the chat. Uh, we've got one of our staff members here, Kyle, who will be monitoring the chat and providing um, links to some of the resources that we're talking about, um, as well as answering questions right in the chat. Um, and as Kyle has written there, feel free to send email questions. If, if something doesn't get answered today, or if you have other questions that we're not covering, um, Current students are familiar with arts.undergrad at ualberta.ca and for those of you that are new students and joining us in September, you've been using the arts.recruiting at ualberta.ca email address. So feel free to email um, either one of those email addresses to get in touch with us. So uh, once again, thank you for tuning in to our one hour live Q&A on experiential learning here in the Faculty of Arts. My name is Joanna Mancher and I am the Student Engagement and Communications Specialist with the Faculty of Arts. I am also a proud arts grad. I graduated from the drama department with a BA Honours in Drama and I've been working at the university for about 11 years already. So um, I'm happy to share with you all that I've learned and experienced. Um, pass it along, everybody knows their order. So Amber, Jill, Jenna, Sherilyn, Taylor and Kyle. Great. Uh, thank you, Joanna, and welcome, everybody. Glad you could join us. So um, as Joanna mentioned, my name is Amber Nicholson, and I'm the Career Development Officer in the Faculty of Arts. So I oversee basically broadly career development activities for art students, which includes Arts Work Experience, which is our co-op program for our undergraduate students, which we'll be talking about. Um, I am also a proud arts graduate, U of A graduate. My undergraduate degree is in psychology um, and my master's is in communications and technology. Uh, I look forward to talking to you some more. Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful and very warm day. Uh, my name is Jill Flemmon. I am the CSL Communications and Program Coordinator. Uh, so a lot of my role oversees uh, co-curricular programming for experiential learning opportunities and then also communicating and working with students, community partners and instructors about the work that we do. So thanks for joining us. Hi everybody, my name is Jenna. Um, I'm the brand new CSL intern for the fall, so haven't really done much yet, but I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm in my last year of environmental science and I've taken three CSL courses, so I know quite a bit about CSL. Hi everyone, I'm Sherilyn Trompeter and in my, if in a non-pandemic world, I would be uh, doing study abroad. Uh, I'm still doing study abroad, but it's just with a bit of an asterisk at the moment since we can barely leave our province, let alone uh, leave our country, but I'm here uh, uh, organizing activities for everybody uh, to do study abroad in the future. We have a number of study abroad programs through the Faculty of Arts, which I'm a part of, uh, and I'm excited to talk about all of those with you today. Again, thank you for coming. We, I also am a bachelor, I also have a Bachelor of Arts degree in Latin American Studies and a history in, uh, um, minor in history, as well as a Master's in Business Administration uh, from here, as well as Tech de Monterrey in Mexico. So uh, looking forward to speaking with all of you on your journey. Hi everyone, my name is Taylor Joseph. I'm the Student Services Assistant with the Faculty of Arts Undergraduate Office. Uh, I'm also a proud uh, Bachelor of Arts graduate. I graduated in November 2019 uh, with a major in Sociology, minor in Psychology. Uh, I also did the Arts Work Experience program and I graduated with the Certificate in International Learning. And I'm looking forward to talking to you all today. Kyle, okay, go ahead. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure if Jackie was going. Um, hi everyone, I'm Kyle Ireland. I'm with Recruitment and Communications and the Faculty of Arts. Uh, I was a major in history with a minor in sociology, and I'll be here to answer any of your generalized questions today. Oh, Jackie, we're gonna get you to try that one more time. Your mic didn't get unmuted. Can you hear me now? There? <laughs> so 
sorry. I was just saying that I'm here mostly as an observer. I'm learning as well. I just started my position in December. I'm the Indigenous Engagement and Recruitment Specialist with the Faculty of Arts. Um, I'm also a graduate of the U of A, I'm, but I have a BA in Native Studies. My minor is in Anthropology. And so I'm just honestly learning as well with all of the attendees. So I'll be off just listening. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So uh, as the description for today's Q&A mentioned, we're going to review three different opportunities for um, hands-on, out-of-the-classroom learning opportunities, which we re commonly refer to as experiential learning. So I am going to invite Amber to speak about the Arts Work Experience Program, followed by Jill for Community Service Learning, and then Sherilyn will talk about study abroad and how that relates specifically to the Faculty of Arts. So take it away, Amber. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so Arts Work Experience provides an opportunity for undergraduate students across all program majors um, to gain career-related paid professional work experience before you graduate. So we have an accredited, um, there's sort of a national body that accredits co-op programs in Canada. So we have an accredited co-op program that you can join after you've obtained about 30 credits. So um, with a full course load, that would be about the end of your first year, up to a maximum of 105 credits with a minimum 2.3 GPA. Um, having said that, you're welcome if you are entering first year or in first year, you're welcome to ask questions this year and attend our information session, which will be going on later in the fall. Uh, work experience opportunities are full time and uh, so you're taking a break from your classes and going out in an applied work environment for 4, 8, 12 or even up to 16 months. Uh, we work with employers across the public, private and nonprofit sectors. Um, so it's a really, um, as the Faculty of Arts is diverse, so are the opportunities in awe. So very diverse range of opportunities. Um, our website is quite simple. It's just uab.ca slash awe. So definitely uh, welcome you to go and check that out. We have some student experience videos on that website too. So you might be interested to see those and looking forward to answering your questions. Thanks, Amber. Uh, so I'm Jill. I'm gonna talk a little bit about community service learning, which we often just refer to as CSL. Some of you may, um, know about it as CEL, Community Engaged Learning, uh, but here at the University of Alberta, we call it CSL. Uh, so community uh, service learning links academic coursework to community-based experiences. So what that means is uh, you could be taking a psychology class uh, and there's an opportunity for you to take what you're learning in that psychology class and apply it to a real life setting in our community, working with one of our over 200 community partners, uh, mostly within the nonprofit, um, some public schools and some government sectors. Uh, so students who are interested in this kind of learning, uh, getting those tangible skills, kind of maybe getting out of your comfort zone, uh, connecting with your community, learning more about uh, different communities that you might not know about, uh, and just meeting new people, uh, this might be for you. So it's a 20 hour placement typically for each class. So that means as part of your coursework, you're going out into the community for 20 hours over the four month term. Um, students who like this way of learning can pursue a certificate in uh, community engagement and service learning. And that's five courses uh, that you would normally take uh, as part of your degree. So when you, do, when you graduate, you end up with an extra credential on your degree that shows potential employers that you've already spent over 100 hours in community while you were a student. Um, we also offer a wide range of other opportunities from a nonprofit board internship program. So learning about the nonprofit sector from a governance perspective versus a frontline perspective. Uh, we offer internships, which we have uh, a current or upcoming intern uh, joining us today. Uh, we also offer scholarships and bursaries um, and lots of other things. So if you're interested in CSL or how to get started, our website is similar to the AWT website, it's uab.ca slash CSL. 
So I'm going to start off by saying uh, you're probably here, number one, since you're interested in art, so you're currently an art student. And what is the commonality that all art students usually have in common is that you're interested in people and uh, in some aspect. So whether it's helping people or studying about people or being involved in working with people, you're choosing, you're choosing a difficult path because people are complicated. One. Uh, by choosing any one of our experiences, um, AWE, CSL, or study abroad, and uh, you're going to be engaging, um, you're going to be challenging yourself uh, in with with study abroad in a completely different um, at, in a completely different environment. So, what's one of the things that for me is very appealing to study abroad is that it is it's it's great for your uh, it's great for your own personal experience. Um, because for many people, they, you, you might be still at home with your parents um, and this might be your only experience um, having a university experience abroad. So you can go away for a summer period or for a semester or for a full academic year abroad. And I really like to um, challenge people by saying it's not a nice, it is a nice add on to your degree. But for some things, it's actually fundamental to the academic experience that you're looking for. So for example, if you are in classics and history and you want to study about, uh, and, and you're learning about um, uh, the classics, you need to go and actually go on a dig. And we have those opportunities in Greece for you to do that. If you're learning a different language, if you're learning French, if you're, if, and if you're saying that you want to be an international person um, for, in, your, in, your, in your job after you, you graduate, it's, not, it's, it's one thing to have uh, to learn in French on campus or in your home, but it's another thing to be completely immersed in that other environment, to really understand more than just the words, more than just grammar, the cultural context. And that's super important, especially in today's uh, day and age. So we have a number of language programs and cultural programs. Um, the Department of Modern Languages and Cultural Studies runs a program in France every year. They also have a program in the Ukraine, as, uh, and we have programs um, for next year in Cuba, that's that's uh, currently scheduled. We also have programs in Belgium, that's going to be uh, offered in 2021, as well as uh, our school in Cortona, which you can do in the summertime as well. So currently, everything is right now scheduled to go for 2021. Obviously, we don't know what's happening with the pandemic, but certainly, if you're in first or second year, um, we're hopeful and optimistic that you can travel in your third or fourth year. So that's where we're going with that. Wonderful, okay. So um, I see David asked a question in the chat and David, we will get to that. Um, but we got a really great question in advance that I think is gonna be a wonderful way to kick off our whole conversation today. Um, so what I am going to encourage everybody to do that's listening, um, we have a number of questions that we received in advance and I wanna make sure we get to those. Um, however, uh, like David just asked a question in the chat, if there's something that you want a follow-up answer to or you think of something new while we're talking, please do type it into the chat box and we will get to that question. Um, so the first question that I think is awesome Someone asked us, what opportunities in the arts are the most underrated or unknown to the public? And I'm gonna give every one of our panelists a chance to answer that and then we'll carry on. So what I'm going to say is, um, I think this one is going to, be, might not seem so obvious right off the start. I think one of the most underrated things that students can do when they're an art student is read and watch and learn all of your opportunities. So what I mean by that is, current students get a newsletter on Friday mornings and this is going to be one of your best places for finding out all sorts of information. Um, whether that comes from a new scholarship or award opportunity that has come up or um, some kind of talk or lecture or uh, volunteer opportunity, job placement, something like that. Oftentimes there's lots of lead time on things and more often than not, there's also stuff that happens really quickly and there isn't a lot of lead time. And your news, the student newsletter is going to be one of the best places to learn about all these kind of opportunities. So that's my sort of tip and bit of advice for all new students is to read that student newsletter to find out about all your options that everyone else is going to talk about. So um, we'll go in the same order. So Amber, Jill. Great. Um, it's a really interesting question. Underrated opportunities. I'm going to say um, 
One thing that I think is often underrated is starting your career development early in your degree program. And that's kind of what experiential learning is all about, right? So it's getting that hands-on experience where you're sort of almost making extensions to what you learn in the classroom. Um, and at the U of A and in the Faculty of Arts, you have lots of great opportunities to connect with all these experiential learning programs, but you also have really good facilitated opportunities to do things like job shadows, uh, career information interviews, to attend career fairs. There's a really uh, broad and rich diversity of ways to kind of engage in your career development. And I challenge all of you to start that early in your degree because the sooner you start it, you start to get that bit of a breadcrumb trail, right, to follow to see what you might want to do next. So, um, yeah, that would be my... Great. Um, well, uh, I have to honestly say, I think uh, CSL maybe not underrated, but maybe unknown. So something that students often tell us who, when they do find out about CSL is, why didn't I know about this earlier? Or I never knew this existed. Um, oftentimes students, what we say, kind of accidentally bump into CSL. So they're taking a class and they don't even know that it has a CSL component in it. Um, or a friend told them about it or something like that. We recognize that there are so many opportunities for students on campus and ways to uh, really enrich your degree. Um, but obviously getting out into the community and taking the knowledge that you're learning in the classroom uh, and gaining new skills, meeting new people, applying your learning in, in real ways um, is really an amazing part, uh, can be an amazing part of your degree. Uh, and you're doing this all while you're actually in class. So um, yeah, I would say also in addition to that is go to and find out about as many things as possible. Um, the list is long of ways to be engaged uh, as part of your degree. Um, and seek out those opportunities. Try different things. Some of them might not work or might not be for you, um, but you'll eventually find the one that, uh, that really fits. I think to continue on to what Jill was saying is just ask questions. Um, there's lots of people on campus that's able to, that's, that are willing to answer your questions. So feel free to ask questions to people in the undergraduate student services office or in your department um, or uh, any, of, any of us that are here today, absolutely. Uh, lots of people that work at the university are very passionate about, um, uh, about education and, and about helping students get the best out of their education. So please feel free um, to ask. My, my, for myself, my parents didn't go to university um, in this country. So uh, I had to kind of navigate uh, the, the ropes myself. And the one thing I wish I would just say is I wish I would have just asked more questions and, and, and get a little bit more help along the way because uh, people are here to help you, not keep you out. So that's one thing. Uh, one thing, uh, I think the most underrated thing is that when people think of study abroad, it's like, oh, I don't, I'm not rich, I don't have a lot of money, or I need to have a part-time job. And that's usually the biggest barrier for people participating on study abroad. But I could send you to China for, well, uh, when there's no COVID and when we have this, uh, the, the government of China uh, will offer to pay for your plane ticket, um, your tuition, your accommodation, and give you a stipend to be in China for up to a year um, for your studies. So that's one opportunity. Another opportunity, this is available to all Canadian students, is actually um, to learn the other language. So if you're an Anglophone, uh, you're able to go to Quebec uh, and the government of Canada will pay for your, um, uh, for your study in Quebec. So it's not internationally, but it's, but it's again, these are, these are cost effective uh, opportunities for you to go abroad. So if you are uh, like myself, I was on student loans and in my undergraduate and my graduate programs. So if you are on student loans, working your part-time job um, and wondering how you're going to be paying for tuition, this study abroad is can be an opportunity for you as well. So I want to make sure that you can see yourself in a study abroad opportunity. Um, I don't know what on about arts because I'm a science student but I will say one thing that most people don't know 
is that there's so many research opportunities that I wish I would have taken advantage of when I was in my first and second year. And you don't have to be in sciences, like arts has so many research opportunities in history, anthropology, design, all that kind of stuff. Just contact a professor that you really enjoy or contact URI, the undergrad research initiative and get researching and put that on your uh, final thing when you're graduated. Look at what I did. I created like a big essay. Yeah. Um, and I would agree with everyone uh, with all the points that they made. One thing I would add is uh, Certificates. I think certificates are really underrated. Um, and I actually have a friend of mine who pursued the CSL certificate, and she says that it has been the, one of the best things that she's ever done in addition to her degree. And she really uh, credits her success sometimes more so to her certificate than to her degree. Um, but she loves it because she's been able to work in nonprofits, and it's been a really easy transition for her. Um, and so getting that certificate um, and just getting that experience while you're in your undergraduate degree, um, you, you get more experiences before you're kind of released to the real world or the adult wor world, if you will. Um, so definitely look into certificates. Um, we have so many within the Faculty of Arts and uh, I'm sure that you would be able to find one that works for you if you wanted to. So Kyle and Jackie, I know you guys aren't with your video right now, but um, if you want to add to this, just unmute yourself and jump on in with a underrated or overlooked opportunity. And otherwise, we'll get ready to move on. So one of the next questions we got, I know there's a, quite a few um, incoming new students, and I also know sort of, um, you know, going from first year to second year, so still really early on in, in your student career. So there was a question that we had that was talking about sort of what are some common challenges or first year, first year issues that students run into. So in the context of experiential learning, um, I'm going to get Taylor and Jenna to talk about sort of, you know, sort of what would you tell yourself as a first year? <laughs> so um, in keeping this like kind of related to experiential learning, some of the challenges that you may be facing right now as a first year student is there's too many options. It's overwhelming. You don't know where to start. You have no idea. There's so many different areas to study. Um, what I would say is just take classes of interest um, and just take your first year to really explore your options. So don't feel pressured to immediately sign up for student clubs or to sign up for all these certificates or sign up for everything, right? We really want you to focus on your studies and really identify and discover what you're really interested in. So really take that first year to really understand your interests um, and maybe develop a new interest in the process. Um, one, other th one other challenge I would say is sometimes not enough structure. So uh, for myself, when I started with the arts degree, um, again, it kind of went with the overwhelming aspect of there's so many different things for me to do. What do I do? How do I do it properly? Um, and there really is no right way to do it. It's just how you do it. Um, so if you're looking and you need some more structure, you need to identify certain things that you need to do, that might be a good option for you to start looking at certificates or looking at studying abroad and kind of planning for the future so that right now in, in the present day, you're taking the courses that are going to equip you the best that you can to pursue those other opportunities. So if you know that you want to study abroad and let's say you want to go to China, you might want to take Chinese uh, language courses, right, in your first year. So definitely take this time to obviously understand what you're interested in, discover your passions, but also you do want to do a little bit of planning in, in the meantime. And if you can explore those other opportunities, that will help you to create some more structure now so you're more prepared in the future. Okay, a couple things. Um, first, don't feel like you need to take five classes because I thought that everyone did five classes every semester and finished in exactly four years, but that's definitely not true. Don't overwhelm yourself the first year, or especially the first semester is really overwhelming. I took five classes in three labs and I almost died. So yeah, take four classes, take three if you want. It's There's really no reason to rush and push yourself and be so stressed. Um, also, don't feel like you need to make your classes 
right after one another, especially when we're back on campus, you're going to be like running all over. Sometimes it's nice to have that one hour, two hour break in between to study. It forces you to go to the library or like eat something, you know, it's good. Um, and also if you're in one of those first year classes where you have to choose between a bunch of them, look at the professor and go and rate my prof to find the best professor and go into that class. So those are my tips. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so we're going to keep moving along here. Um, we've got a question, and again, it sort of relates to classes. And, you know, it's about um, how do I change my minor? How do I decide which courses to enroll into and things like that? So I'm going to get Jill, Sherilyn, and Amber to um, add a little bit into this conversation. So one thing that I will say, and I will get Kyle to throw up a link to our tip sheets but there's lots of different ways that you can decide about how to structure your course schedule. Um, one of them obviously being taking a look at what the required courses are for your major. Um, little known fact, you can also decide to do a double major if you'd like. You can have a major and a minor. Minors are not required, but um, to have a minor, it's actually not that many courses that are at, at a minimum. So considering, you know, you could, if you really wanted, you could have a double major, a minor, and like three certificates. And it's all just sort of how you coordinate it and how you plan it. Um, so in some regards, that can feel really overwhelming. But at the same token, if you can possibly identify, you know, I'd like to, you know, in my third year, participate in the Arts Work Experience Program. And I want to get a, you know, a job in sort of this field. Well, then what kind of courses would you like to take that you think would help you in that type of job placement and then work backwards a little bit. Um, that can be one way to help you pick your classes. Um, and then in terms of declaring a major or a minor or a certificate, declaring it right off the start or changing your mind is actually a really simple thing to do. All you need to do is fill out a Google form and then that gets processed by the Faculty of Arts Undergraduate Student Services Office. So what we would say is you don't necessarily need to declare your major or minor to go ahead and pursue the courses that are required for those areas. Sometimes it does help to be declared in those areas because um, you'll get more correspondence from the undergraduate advisors from those departments. Um, you'll also make some connections with other students in those same programs. Um, if you feel like you're gonna flip flop and change your mind, you can change your major and minor as many times as you'd like. Um, if you do it 15 times over the course of three months, <laughs> you might, you know, get a little asterisk beside your name from the advisors in the USS office, but there really is nothing holding you back from changing your mind. And um, I think that is also one thing that a lot of students feel like that they can't do. Um, there's no gold star on your parchment when you graduate if you stay with the same major when you started with. So definitely being open to the idea of switching and pursuing courses that you like. Um, but again, to add to it, what courses should I enroll into if you're thinking about arts work experience, CSL, or study abroad? So Amber, Jill, and Sherilyn, take it away. Yeah, Amber, uh, you go first. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's an interesting question. So at least in terms of work experience, I don't know that I could suggest specific courses to take, but I always advise students when they come for career advising and ask, you know, what courses will give me a better shot at a job when I graduate, those kinds of things, really is study what you like. And that's kind of that process of figuring that out a bit in first year too, because you might have never heard of East Asian studies before and you take an East Asian studies course and you love it and that ends up being your major, you might take one and go, hmm, something else is more for me. I really love my psychology course or my linguistics course or whatever. Um, when we talk about applying the skills from your arts degree into careers, we talk about examining the skill set that you bring. And really outside of some very specific occupations, employers aren't as concerned, like they aren't drilling down to the level of what specific courses you took. It's what skills did you develop? How are you able to talk about those skills? And that's something that we provide coaching on when you're applying for work experience positions or when you're doing say a mock or a practice interview for maybe a summer job. So that's something career services can definitely help with. 
I will say that there are some courses like CSL courses before Jill, <laughs> before I throw it to Jill, um, that have that hands-on learning component. So what you're doing there is you are getting out and building some experience, some applied experience in those kinds of things. So I think scaffolding, if, if that term makes sense, from one experiential learning opportunity to another can make a lot of sense. Um, so that, that would be the only thing I could think in terms of really specific courses. Great. Um, so hot tip, most CSL courses or courses with a CSL component in them are not listed on Bear Tracks. Um, so if you think that um, you're interested in community engagement or volunteering or getting to know your community, um, go to our website uh, and we have a page that lists all of the courses that are offered each term that have either a CSL component in them or are a CSL designated course. Um, BearTracks is great for lots of things, but um, for as long as CSL has been around, we haven't been able to implement that in part of our programming simply because of our timing. Um, our office works with both instructors and community partners to create placements and projects for individual courses. Um, and oftentimes that doesn't give us enough time for the bear tracks um, rules and regulations to make that automated and obvious on bear tracks. So please go to our website. We have normally we have a, a bit more to offer. Uh, now that we are in the age of COVID, um, we are learning how to engage with community in different ways. Uh, so our course offerings are a little bit fewer this year. I think currently we have 21 courses uh, offered for the fall term. So go there, check it out. Um, you can go by either your major or minor or just things you're interested in. So if you're interested in modern languages and cultural studies or psychology or women and gender studies, um, they're all listed there. And they also have the section behind them. So when you're registering, make sure you register for the correct section. Uh, so that course will have a CSL component in it. Um, other thing I would say is I wouldn't recommend choosing a CSL designated course in your first year right off the bat. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because uh, our CSL 100 and 200 courses really dive deep into the pedagogy of community service learning. So why do we engage? Um, who does it benefit? Um, so it's really, it's, it's quite heavy uh, for those who are interested in community engagement. I highly recommend it. Uh, and if you're doing the certificate, it's a requirement. But I would suggest kind of dipping your toe in a course that just has um, an optional CSL component. You can do it or, or not and see if you like it. Uh, it might not be for you or it might. Uh, and then for each course that has a CSL component, we have anywhere between five to 20 different placements to offer. So our partnership coordinators work with community members and the curriculum of each individual course to create projects that match the theory of learning in the classroom. So you could be doing um, research, you could be doing now in, a, in COVID days, online tutoring or uh, after school homework tutoring online or just talking to seniors uh, at Sage uh, Senior Center. So think about different opportunities that might interest you. Um, and I'd say maybe go slow, but then if you find you take a CSL class and you love it, then dive right in. But again, go to our website and you'll find those courses there. So for study abroad, again, it's not, um, there's no, uh, like, like Amber was saying, there's no specific courses that uh, will get you a study abroad uh, program. If you are considering a study abroad, uh, please know that over 80% of our exchanges are in uh, English. So you don't have to speak another language um, to do a successful study abroad program. However, if you are interested in, in going to usually Latin America or China um, or Japan, those three those three regions and countries are jet, like you'll find you'll have more opportunities and you'll have more um, choices if you are able to speak Spanish or Chinese or Japanese. So in your first year, if you're interested in taking that, I would strongly suggest you take intro level um, Chinese or intro level Japanese or intro level Spanish if you are looking at that. You don't have to have a super high fluency level, um, again, to go on a program in, the, in those regions, but it just gives you more opportunities. The more languages you speak, the more opportunities you have in the international arena. 
Um, there are a lot of different courses, so whether you're in art and design or in econ or in philosophy or women and gender studies, um, again, in back, the Faculty of Arts, we all deal with people and there's and often in your studies, you'll find comparison and, and uh, com comparators. So uh, you'll be able to find an international component in every single one of uh, the departments and courses that we offer in the Faculty of Arts. So just to name a few, um, I would say in sociology specifically, there's uh, 269, uh, two, uh, sociology 291, sociology 369, which deal with um, culture, as well as 212, 335, 345, and 435. So um, that's just in sociology alone. So that I've listed like 10 different courses just in sociology. Uh, philosophy, there's Indian philosophy that's being taught. There's Islamic philosophy, there's biology, society, and value. So, um, I think in the Faculty of Arts, there's a rich um, number of courses that you can take, which would benefit your study abroad program. I think the, the thing about being, um, being successful in study abroad is number one, you have to have curiosity. Number two, you have to have humility. So I think if you enter any sort of study abroad program with both of those things in mind, um, you'll have a great experience. Awesome. Okay, so we're starting to get a couple of questions in the chat and we still have lots to go from before. So I'm going to move on to what kind of hands-on experiences are there for psychology students? We had, a, we had a number of those come up in advance. So um, I'll get Amber, Jill and Jenna to talk about what opportunities there are for psych students, but also if there's any sort of other majors that really jump out as having particular opportunities. Yeah, so um, I think for uh, psychology or whatever program major you're choosing, when I'm talking to students about how to engage in hands-on experience, part of it is what are you interested in? So um, Jenna mentioned research. So there's great research opportunities connected to all of our program majors and certainly in psychology. Um, if you're interested in, say, counseling, there's lots of opportunities to get involved as a volunteer on campus with organizations like our Peer Support Centre. Um, there's off-campus volunteer opportunities with things like the Edmonton Distress Line. And I mean, the thing with our program majors, again, there's such an, I think, exciting diversity of career options with our various program majors that uh, people end up doing a lot of different things with a psychology degree. So it really depends what you're interested, what your inter what, where your curiosity is taking you, right? Um, don't devalue things like joining student groups. There's great uh, leadership development, engagement opportunities through student groups, um, both departmental and related to areas of interest. Um, yeah, just a rich diversity, I think, of volunteer opportunities on and off campus. And we could drill down to some of the specifics, I think, um, depending on your interests, if you had an advising session. Um, I will mention, I went through the honors program in psychology. I was interested in, I, I kind of took a turn in my career, but I was interested in continuing in counseling psychology at the time. And um, I really enjoyed the honors program. So that's a way to get some really in-depth hands-on if you're interested in grad school or those research experiences that can be really helpful as well. Uh, in terms, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of psychology, um, we have uh, a good relationship with uh, the Department of Psychology and almost always uh, have psychology courses offered uh, that have a CISA component. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so coming up in the fall term, we have uh, Psych 323 and Psych 329, two sections of Psych 329. Um, Psych 323 is infant um, development, uh, infant and child development. So students uh, who might take that course, some of your placement opportunities would be maybe working with youth school, which is run through the Senate here on campus, uh, working with, with kids and youth. Um, you might also work with Braided Journeys, uh, which is um, a program for Indigenous youth. You might, as I mentioned earlier, do some uh, homework or study, um, after school study with 
Edmonton Mennonite Center for Newcomers or Edmonton Immigrant Services Association. So again, working and tutoring uh, children and learning about infant and child development in that course and then actually working with children and seeing how they are developing. Um, Psych 329 is uh, about the psychology of aging, uh, so on the other spectrum. Uh, but again, students will learn about the psychology of aging in their coursework and then maybe go and work uh, with the Greater Edmonton Foundation, working with different seniors' homes um, or SAGE, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we also work with Elder Care Edmonton. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, ways to be involved in the psychology program and then actually, as I, as I mentioned, seeing kind of what you're learning in your textbooks, seeing that through um, the engagement with real people that you would be working with. Um, I don't know a lot about psychology, but I will say that CSL is so, so helpful in so many ways, not just learning hands-on in what you're doing, but also it gives you connections. And my CSL experience is how I got my internship with the Sustainability Council, which is how I got my internship with CSL. So it just gave me so much work experience and it helped me in my career. And now my resume looks so much better. So definitely do CSL. It's a, a huge bonus. There's co-ops, internships. Um, I mentioned URI before. Um, I highly recommend joining a club. I wish someone would have told me that in my first year because that's how I made most of my friends. Um, a fitness class. Or if you like the outdoors or the north, there's a class called Renar 465. And you can go to the Yukon for one whole week and learn like hands-on about the indigenous communities and the caribou and lynx and learn how to trap squirrels. And it, it's really cool. Awesome. Thanks for that input, Jenna. I think that's one of the things too that um, I think is such a benefit of being an art student is that there is such a truly diverse range of experiences that students can have. And if you're open at all to some, you know, new ideas and possibilities, there's going to be really unique ways for you to take courses that you might not think actually apply to what you're learning, but I guarantee they will. It's just this spider web that things connect in such interesting ways. So being open to taking some new courses, some new experiences, um, you know, doing that optional CSL component, just signing up for awe and going to talk to Amber, <laughs> you know, more one-on-one. -on -one. Like even if you don't decide to pursue it, that's okay. Sign up, take that next step, see what comes of it, comes up out of it. Um, so I'm going to jump ahead. I know we're actually starting to run out of time here. So I'm going to get Amber to talk about just a few of the basics around the Earth's Work Experience pro program. Um, do you get credit? What's the cost? Application deadlines? Um, and whether or not this program is open to international students. Um, and there was a question in the chat that also came up about how competitive it is. Okay. So um, I'll start with the question about international students. So yes, it is open to both domestic and international students across all of our program majors. Um, Basically, when you're on a work term, you're maintaining your full-time status with the university by being enrolled in a course. Um, there are There is a learning component uh, while you're on a work term where we have you set learning objectives with your work term supervisor and really reflect on what you've been learning and the skills you've been developing. Um, so you uh, it will often extend your degree program. So that's something to be aware of, right? Because you're not taking classes while you're on a work term. So um, you're enrolled in a work experience course, the rate of tuition, it's those courses are a fee index of nine. So they cost, if you take what you pay for a three credit course and times that by 1.5, that's what you would pay for that four month chunk that you're out working. Um, the, um, Salary associated with work experience positions. We did a wage survey uh, last year and the average salary was $20 an hour. Um, some, are, some are higher, some are a little bit lower um, depending on the sector. So often students will have that cost paid off within the first couple of weeks of employment. Um, in terms of eligibility, once you're over or in and around that 30 credit limit, um, or minimum number of credits, I would encourage you to come and talk to us. We do an intake interview. So really that's 
uh, more about sort of seeing whether awe is a good fit for you because as you've heard, there's lots of different ways to be engaged and involved. Um, and so we just kind of want to make sure even if you've obtained that minimum eligibility that it's going to be sort of a good fit. Um, I will say that um, you've probably heard this, you know, you need experience to get experience and that's kind of what experiential learning is about, right? And I talked about that idea of scaffolding or getting involved early in your program. So coming into AWE with some experience, working, being part of a student group, volunteering, having taken a CSL course, any of those things will make you more competitive for work experience positions. So definitely uh, encourage you to get involved in first year. Again, as Taylor said, doesn't mean you have to do everything and anything, be selective, but um, do be engaged and involved. That will really serve you well, no matter what you decide to do. I don't know if I answered all the questions, Joanna, was that? Oh, and the courses yeah, are pass, fail, or credit, no credit. So they do not count towards your 120 credits. This is very much extra to your degree program. I did forget to mention too, that if you complete a total of 12 months of work experience, you graduate with a co-op parchment notation. So it will say you graduated with your major in uh, drama with cooperative education right on your degree parchment. Awesome, thanks Amber. So Taylor, I'm gonna get a little bit more of sort of that like personal student experience because you participated in AWE, you participated in study abroad, you've done some certificates, um, talk about sort of maybe a little bit of that journey. What was that like in terms of deciding to sign up and participate, being in the moment, and then now what can you look back and reflect on and go, oh, wow, I didn't know that that was going to be the case after I went through it. Oh, boy. Lots of questions. Um, so with the, with the experiential learning, so um, I studied abroad twice. I uh, was a part of the arts work experience program for 12 months um, and I did the certificate in international learning. Um, of the first of that series, I did studying abroad first. And I actually did the Faculty of Arts Cortona campus, which is in beautiful Tuscany, Italy. Highly recommend you go if you've never been. Um, hopefully we're able to do study abroad opportunities sooner than later. Um, I kind of already, always knew that I wanted to, I guess, globalize my degree and my experience with um, my post-secondary education. Um, I'd always wanted to travel. I'd never really had that opportunity by myself. Um, I really wanted to immerse myself culturally. Um, and so if you wanna do any of those things, or if you're just looking for a new experience and you really want to internationalize your degree, globalize your degree, really contribute um, more to your degree, I highly recommend studying abroad. Um, after my first study abroad experience, I was then eligible for the Certificate in International Learning. So that's kind of how I got into that certificate program as well. Um, and then after that, uh, I decided that I really wanted to gain some sort of valuable work experience. Again, you kind of need experience before um, you can start applying to full-time jobs after work, uh, or sorry, after university because not everyone's going to hire someone who just had a degree and that was it. If that was all that you did during your degree versus someone who did 12 months of work experience and two study abroad programs and a certificate in whichever, there's going to be more competitive candidates. So pursuing arts work experience for me was a really logical decision um, because I knew that I wanted to gain as much work experience and career education as possible. Um, so I applied for arts work experience. I, I got a position. I was the international student engagement intern for the Faculty of Arts uh, in 2017. Um, and it was, it to this day is the most valuable experience I've ever had. Um, I really contributed positively to the student environment, um, especially non-academically, creating student clubs. Uh, it really helped me develop my presentation skills. I did numerous in-class announcements. I, uh, worked with student, international students, exposing them to different um, opportunities on campus and off campus, um, and it really helped me develop as, as a person and as a student as well. Um, and so I highly recommend, if you're looking for anything that is additional to your degree, um, you want to get that experience, you want to globalize your degree, you want to have that little bit of oomph to your experience, um, I highly recommend pursuing any three of those opportunities. I think it's really contributed to um, some of the success that I've had after my degree. Um, and yeah, 
highly recommend it, really. <laughs> awesome, thanks Taylor. Um, okay, so let's move along to, um, what's the best way to participate in community service learning? So I know Jill and Jenna, you guys have talked a bit about this already. Um, do you get credits participating in CSL? How does that work? Is there a cost? Um, deadlines? Talk a little bit more about that. Do you want to go um, first, Jenna? Yeah, I can go first. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for me, I took three CSL courses and all of them were already courses I had to take for my degree. So it was pretty easy. I took SOS 291, AREC 173, and my capstone. Um, and they gave me an option. They said, yeah, you can do CSL or you can just do regular coursework and I'm going to be honest the CSL path is always easier the the other route for my classes was like doing tons of essays and reading and yeah CSL you actually get to participate and do hands-on um, learning so you do 20 hours over the whole semester and usually you do some sort of workshop or research or presentation they all differ a lot um, for me, I created workshops mostly and uh, at the end of it, you give a little presentation to your class, you tell them what you learned. Um, yeah, the process is really easy. You just fill out some forms. You have to do like a little bit of writing at the end, but it's so, so fun. And then you meet so many cool people as well. So it's, it's actually extreme. Thanks, Jenna. Yeah, CSL courses are regular credit courses, just like you any course you normally take. Um, so you do get credit for all of them. Uh, if you are looking to pursue the certificate, um, we make sure we basically have a, I started my CSL placement and then I finished my placement uh, forms at the beginning and the end of the term. Um, there's also uh, what's always connected to CSL is a reflection component. So those workshops and presentations that Jenna was talking about. So after you do your service um, in the community, we want students to make those connections and reflect on what did I do in community? Why did I do it? Who did it benefit? What did I learn? Um, so that's the part that you would be sharing with your class. But these are just regular classes. They just have um, CSL kind of injected into them like a jelly donut uh, and you need to get to uh, take that opportunity. Most of the time it is optional. There are a few courses, um, obviously CSL designated courses, uh, some Native Studies courses, Women and Gender Studies courses, and MLCS, did I say that already? Um, where the opportunity is mandatory, but most of the time CSL is optional and it's just a regular part of your class. As far as cost, there's no um, extra tuition involved. You just pay your tuition like you normally would. Uh, sometimes some of our community partners require a security check. So that could be a police intervention check or a youth intervention check. Um, sometimes those may be an extra cost to a student. Uh, so maybe 20 bucks. Each year, the Edmonton Police Services changes the rules and regulations about security checks. So we're still negotiating what that looks like for the farm but we're also anticipating since most of the placements will be online and not uh, frontline in community organizations that police checks uh, won't be a requirement but that's listed um, each of the placement opportunities that are available to students students can see those through what's called a portal um, so you'll find your class so let's say it's psych 323 uh, and then there'll be a list of maybe 10 or 15 different organizations that are attached to that course. And you can choose which placement you're interested in. Um, and at that time, there'll be a description of what the placement is. So what will I be doing in community? And who will I be working with? And how does this all work? Um, if it says there is a security check requirement, um, then we help facilitate that process for you through our office. Um, but right now, again, we're still working with Edmonton Police Services to figure out what the cost associated with that is. So there is a, a small cost to participate if your placement requires a check, but not all of them do. Okay, great. We've got a couple of questions coming up. So um, Jill, I might get you to type into the chat box here. We got a question about what is a CSL course? So um, I think we've covered this, but perhaps we've had someone join in a little bit later. Um, so we'll go over that. Um, 
We've got two questions. So are the internships in field schools still going to be in session during the COVID-19 pandemic? Are they postponed? What's sort of that looking like? So I'll get Amber and Sherilyn to just briefly talk about sort of how that works in context of COVID-19. And then the next conversation, next question is about people getting late in their degree. So we've got a question from someone who's um, in the last year of their degree and wants to know if there's still time for them to get some experience. How do you get some experience sort of in the last year of your degree? So um, Amber and Sherilyn, first up about COVID. Um, sure, I can answer the COVID question in regards to arts work experience and we actually have these guidelines, policies and procedures during COVID posted on the arts work experience website. So if you're interested, I'd encourage you to take a look. Um, so our accreditation body, Cooperative Education and Work Integrated Learning Canada has put out some best practices during COVID. So uh, for some of our work terms, we require slightly less hours than pre-COVID, but we are continuing with both remote and in-person uh, work terms. It really depends on the nature of the position. Um, and from the university's perspective, what we want to ensure is that students feel safe in those workplaces and are adhering to health and safety guidelines. So we have some information that we pass along to employers and to students to make sure that's happening. But absolutely, um, work terms are going ahead both currently and through the fall and winter, regardless of whether we're remote, um, we're going to be uh, continuing ahead with work experience. I'll let Sherilyn talk about her. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we have cancelled the Cortona winter 2021 semester. Uh, that, that call was made a number of months ago uh, for planning purposes. We are scheduled and we are tentatively planning for um, all of the field schools and all of the programs to be going as of summer 2021. However, that again is a big asterisk. We don't know. Um, and we will be making a call for sure by February 2021 for later that summer. Although I've heard earlier this week that we might be making the call as early as November of this year for summer 2021. So again, uh, we, it is planned, it is scheduled to go, but whether uh, it's happening or not for 2021 is that the call still has to be made most likely in November of this year. Now for 2022, 2023, for those of you who are still early in your degree, we we certainly hope that um, we are able to uh, to recontinue these programs. And there's lots of things we could be doing now in preparation for those programs. Awesome. And then, yeah, let's just touch a little bit, maybe from kind of each of the areas about what students can do when they're you know towards the end of their degree. How do they how do they sort of you know get on get on the train about getting some experience when they're in their last year. Um, so in terms of work experience, arts work experience in particular, we do have an upper credit limit of 105 credits. Um, I will mention that we're opening our application portal back up for applications on August 1st, and that will continue through to September 30th. So if you are entering fourth year and are interested, you still have time to apply. Um, we have positions starting in September, January, and May. So as long as you have a, a full um, equivalent of one full-time term, so minimum of three courses left at the end of your degree program. Um, you cannot end your degree program on a work term, you do have to end your program on an academic term. Um, so part of the philosophy of co-op is you have some time to integrate what you learned in the classroom into a work experience and then from the work experience into the classroom, so that's the reason for that. But it's not necessarily too late in fourth year to participate in awe. And then I think there's lots of things you can do in fourth year to still get really engaged. Um, I would encourage you to also look at the Career Center website, so uab.ca slash cc. Um, there's job shadow week, there's career information interviews, so ways to network and connect with professionals. Um, we'd be happy to talk to you about those, some of specific things related to your uh, circumstances. So if you contact uh, myself, we're happy to do career advising appointments. Um, on those topics as well. I also wanted to add one thing. Um, this may be a bit of an unpopular opinion, but don't be afraid of extending your degree. Um, sometimes not everyone can, and that 
completely makes sense. Obviously, university is expensive, and um, we all kind of want to start working or start doing whatever you want for your goals after your degree. But if you do have the option to extend your degree and you want to gain that experiential learning, um, you know, don't be afraid of doing so. If you need to extend it by another semester or another year, um, the arts work experience program and just being in that post-secondary environment really allows you to learn as you go and, and to also make mistakes. And um, the reality is like once you finish your degree, and you do go into the real world, you're not going to have as much of a generous wiggle room with making those mistakes or making that those learning um, decisions. So arts work experience um, and any sort of experiential learning opportunities allows you to really learn and grow and prepares you. And so if, if that's really a priority for you, um, you may want to consider um, just taking an extra couple months to finish your degree instead, um, just something to consider. Um, I will say that my roommate is in her last year of atmosphere science and she really wanted to do something extra in her last year so she reached out to a professor that she had that she really clicked with and um, he knew her and she really liked his research and now she's going to be doing research with him for fall and winter of her last semester so if there's a professor who knows you and you really like them and you looked up their research and you're interested in it don't hesitate to just send out an email and ask like, hey, is there anything I can help you with? Um, and just put that onto your last year. I think you'd be surprised how many profs actually would like help. Thank you. Yeah, everybody, that's um, those are some really great tips. So we are at our end of our time. Um, so I will just close by saying thank you everybody for tuning in we got through a lot of great questions and unfortunately we actually didn't get to all of them so if anybody has questions that they would like answered do not hesitate to email arts.undergrad at ualberta.ca and for those of you that are incoming students if you're more comfortable continuing with arts.recruiting at ualberta.ca please do so um, and yeah, I guess I would just sort of reiterate that if you want to talk to somebody, but you don't even really know where to start, send an email and say that and say, I just want to talk to somebody about my options, and if I don't really even know what to ask. And there are so many people that would be happy to um, start a conversation with you and find the right way to integrate all the different opportunities that there are. So um, if anybody has anything that they'd like to add, now is your chance. Otherwise, Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone, and uh, follow up with some questions. Bye now. <laughs>